When I was 15 years old, I felt like a complete misfit at school. My friend group larger consisted of the outcasts in the school, and yet at the same time, I was heavily into sport. I did a lot of rowing and a lot of running. When the lunch bell would ring, that rowing and running came in really handy because I would run as fast as I could, usually faster than all the other nerds, so that I could be the fastest nerd in the computer room. Because if you got to the computer room first, you usually ended up with one of the better computers you could use all lunch. And you see, this was my world. I played sport, but I couldn't really hang out with sports kids because I didn't feel like I fit in. You know, being an introvert, I never felt like one of the guys. Like I never felt like I could just be normal in a group of people as they seem to be. And, you know, I occasionally went to a couple of the sports guys' parties, but I never, I didn't have the social confidence to, to fit in. I always just felt like a sore thumb, and I felt like everyone was looking at me thinking, what is this guy doing here? But I did have a secret weapon. My mom. You see, my mom studied psychology, and she ran a business teaching public speaking skills. In fact, largely, she specialized in helping people who were more introverted, who weren't very socially confident, to stand up and give amazing talks in front of crowded rooms. That was her thing. And so having a introverted son, she really helped me a lot to come out of my shell. She taught me public speaking too. She taught me to, to entertain a crowd, to stand in front of a group. And that was really amazing. Um, you know, I learned not just that, but many important lessons from her because of her background. And I know not everyone watching has that super weapon. Not all of you were that lucky. Uh, I know many introverted guys, because I coach so many of you, you end up being adults who ha habitually avoid social situations. Not just because you don't love big social situations, but just because you don't feel like you fit in and you don't feel confident and you don't feel like you can really be yourself, you know, and be liked in that environment. It's not usually just feeling introverted, it's that you don't feel like you belong and don't feel like you can fit in. So today, I want to be your secret weapon. I want to show you some steps that any introvert can take that will really have a huge impact on their social confidence and get them feeling like they're liked, like they belong. Because once you start to feel that way, yes, you'll still, like me, prefer to be at home doing introverted things all on your own. You'll feel confident and capable anytime you're in larger groups. And that could radically change the quality of your life. Don't forget, guys, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This helps me a ton by getting me more views and more attention on YouTube, which inspires me to make more great content just like this. Okay, step one. There is a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I want you to get it right, absolutely right now. You may have heard of this book before. There's a chance that you've read this book before because it is a classic. It's been around for a long time and it has stood the test of time. Now, the reason why this book is so great, by the way, if you've read it, let me ask you, did you actually implement what you learned? Because most people don't. But the reason it's so great is it's, it's written, it's like a guidebook for dummies about how to fit in in social situations. And a lot of the steps are absolutely magical for introverts who don't have a lot of pre-existing group social skills. So I, that's the very first thing. And really, some of my points are going to make in this video come from that book, not all of them. But uh, that's my very first step. Step two, be interested to learn about people. I remember when I was 26 and I was just sort of putting together my company, School of Attraction, the dating coaching. And I was out in the city with one of my friends from high school. And he was, he, I hadn't seen him in a long time and he heard what I was doing and was really eager to head out with me. And you see me flirting with girls just to see what that's supposed to look like. Because remember, my friend group, the outcast group. <laughs> so for him, that's super exciting. And he came out with me and there was a girl that he liked that he saw in the, in, in the bar. So I walked over to her, I introduced, I introduced him to her and then I walked away and did my own thing for a little while. After half an hour, it was clear that he was still doing really well. So I thought I'd be a good wingman and join him and start talking to her not particularly attractive friend just so that he could have some one-on-one -on -one time with the girl he really liked. Uh, about 20 minutes later, after he got his number, we both walked away from the girls. And of course he was stoked that they'd got a phone number but that wasn't what he was talking about. See, he was saying to me, man, how do you do that? I said, what do you mean, dude? He said, you were, th that girl, first of all, she really wasn't attractive at all. And secondly, you were looking at her like she was the most interesting person in the room. 
And I tried talking to her, man, and she was boring. She was dull as a doornail. How did you do that? You see, this is a critical skill for everyone to learn, first of all, because we like people who find us interesting. Um, many extroverts invest a lot of their time and energy making themselves look and sound impressive. But what's interesting is that introverts are much better at listening. They tend to be very good listeners. And so what they can learn to do is they can learn to get other people to feel impressive. And if you make people feel impressive, they're going to like you a lot more than someone who talks about themselves as though they're impressive. But this is why it's so good, especially for introverts. Because when you walk into social situations, you know as an introvert, you don't like small talk. You don't like having to put in all the work and interactions. But if instead what you do is you invest your time thinking about what could this person teach me? What about this person could be interesting for me to learn? And it could be about their job. It could be about their hobbies. It could be about their holiday or their, their country of, of origin. Whatever it is, what can you learn from that person that you could find interesting? And let them know, let them feel interesting for teaching you about this. Now, this is great because as an introvert, you are offloading the work onto the other person. So you don't have to think about what to think to talk about. They do the talking. They thank you for it. And they like you for it. So they're more likely going to want to see you again. And this is, I'm not just talking about dating. I'm talking about everyone, men and women, family, everybody. Start taking more time to do what you're good at as an introvert and listen. Let the other person feel like they're amazing and they'll love you for it. Step number three. Pre-prepare your passions. So one of the first things that I do when I have a new client is I take the time to really get to know them. I have this really sort of uh, getting to know you friendly conversation. The guys think that's all it is. But actually, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the treasure. I'm hunting for the things that they're really passionate about. You know, because everyone has those topics that when I touch those topics, when I start to tickle that topic and getting to talk about his eyes light up. His body language changes. He goes from feeling nervous and unsure of himself to suddenly being like, I know what I'm talking about here. I like this. He lights up. He smiles more. He starts to gesticulate more, right? He becomes more attracted than I've ever seen him up until that point in time. And when I find those topics, I know these are the topics that he needs to talk about in the interactions. But here's the thing. Most introverts aren't necessarily good at expressing the things they're passionate about in a way that's easy to understand for other people. Not to mention, not everybody's passion is fascinating. Great. You could be a, <laughs> you could be a, 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 a introvert who's passionate about travel and knows everything about travel, and that would be interesting to most people, right? But you could just as easily be an introvert who's passionate about stamp collecting, right? So here's the thing, you need to learn how to describe your passions in a way that grips people, that pulls people in. And you need to put in that work for every single one of the topics that you love to talk about. Now, that used to be a little bit hard to do. That used to be something that you guys had to pay someone like me to do for you, to help you You have really great ways to describe the things that you're passionate about. But you can cheat now. So you can get chat GPT and you can type in the thing that you're passionate about and you can go ahead and ask it to, to tell a fascinating story about that passion. Let me give you an example. Let's pretend that you're fascinated about bricklaying. Here's the prompt I would use. Pretend that I'm a bricklayer, but I really love my job. I love using my hands. I love feeling like I've done a quality job. I love being able to see a physical representation of my hard work. I love being in the open air and I love finishing work at 3 p.m. every day. How could I explain my job in a way that won't sound boring to someone who isn't interested in bricklaying? Imagine creating something from the ground up, something that stands strong and serves a purpose with nothing but your own two hands and a key eye for detail. That's what I get to do every day. It's not just laying bricks. It's about bringing a vision to life piece by piece. Each project is like a puzzle where every piece must fit perfectly to create the final picture. What I love about my job is the blend, it's a blend of creativity and passion. There's an art to matching the right brick, choosing the pattern, and ensuring everything is level and sturdy. It's like painting, but instead of brush strokes, I'm working with tangible materials that will stand the test of time. Being outside, feeling the sun on my back and the breeze as I work adds a whole new level of enjoyment. It's a connection to the elements, a reminder of the simple joys of working with nature, not against it. And then there's the satisfaction at the end of the day by 3 p.m. when I clean my tools and step back 
I see not just a wall or a building, but a testament to craftsmanship and hard work. It's a physical representation of what I've accomplished, something that, I will, be, that will be used and appreciated by others. This job, it's about leaving a mark on the world one brick at a time. It's about being part of something bigger than myself, contributing to the community in a way that's both foundational and literal. And the best part, I get to see the results of my workday every day, and not in abstract terms, but in the very walls that make up our towns and cities. So while it might just seem like laying bricks to some, for me, it's a passion. It's about creation and legacy and the satisfaction of a job well done under an open sky. So here's the thing, guys. I don't care about bricklaying. But if someone explained their job of bricklaying that they loved like that, can you see that you would not only understand that person all of a sudden in a way you, you hadn't before, if they were really passionate, you could see in their eyes, because remember, this is a topic you're supposed to do it about a topic you're passionate about. And so if someone explained their job like that, can you not see that not only would you understand them, you would probably like them more? Because you're suddenly adding, you're taking something boring, but adding that very relatable sense of depth and that common human experience of wanting to leave a legacy behind and, and have a sim like do things in a way that, that's very visceral and very hands-on and creating something that lasts. We can all relate to that. ChatGPT knows how to do that for you. So whatever your passion is, I don't care if it's stamp collecting or you're a nuclear physicist or, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is or sport. You can explain it in a way that will be interesting to other people. And now you can cheat and get ChatGPT to do it for you. And so here's the thing. As an introvert, it's true. You want to get the other person talking more because that is offloading the workload you don't like. But the other thing I know that introverts don't like is small talk. We hate it right? None of us like small talk. And so by having sort of three or four passion stories already lined up in your head, things that you're passionate about that you like, and you have a good way to explain what you do to, to a lay person, you're prepared to talk about something of quality of substance. So yes, you're going to get the other people. When, you, when you're social, you're going to get other people talking more than you because you're an introvert. That's what you're good at, listening and letting them feel special. But when you do talk, you want to bring value because as an introvert, you hate small talk. So bring value. Talk about these topics. You have a really interesting and relatable way to talk about them. And when you've talked about them, then you can move the topic back onto them. But when you talk, make it quality and not quantity. That's playing to your strengths. Step number four, start giving compliments like everywhere. Guys, this is probably for your self-esteem. This is probably the most important of all these five steps is you need to learn to start giving other people compliments. See, introverts, as a general rule, and I'm no exception, we don't give compliments, not a lot, not by default. We are in the habit of, of playing it low and playing it safe. And we will give compliments only when they're truly, 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 really over the top deserved. We go through life observing how other people see us and treat us. And it shouldn't be the case, but for most of us, we are impacted by the way other people see us and treat us. We're impacted by the facial expressions we see commonly during the day when people look at us in the eye. We're impacted by these things. And I don't want you to be fake because introverts hate fake people and compliments can easily feel fake. But the thing is that think about your week. How many times have you seen a friend or a work colleague dressed in something that looks quite nice actually? or a new haircut, or a new set of glasses? How many times has a work colleague given you completed work that was done hmm, quite well? Not amazing, but quite well, worth a compliment. You know, how many times has your friend told you a story about something or bought something new that's quite nice? And your compliment was like, yeah, that's cool, man. Right, instead of like, wow, dude, that's so, like, I, I love it. Because you really do. Because remember, introverts tend to play their excitement down. Right? So you need to express your excitement for these things, really give compliments, really let people know that you appreciate certain things. Now you see, this isn't about sucking up to people. It's true that people are gonna like you when you give compliments. And it's true, I don't want them to be fake. I want you to give compliments about real things, right? Because again, introverts hate being fake. But where this is so powerful is that people will start to look at you differently when you give them compliments, when people receive compliments. The, the feedback that you'll get from other people more regularly as you give the compliments will change the way you perceive yourself because people will start to see you differently. In fact, here is my challenge. I challenge you to try this for a week. For one week, I challenge you to give 10 compliments a day. Now that sounds like a lot because as someone who generally doesn't give a lot of compliments, you might give a compliment a week, maybe two compliments a week. 
So 10 a day feels like a lot, but I want you to really get started. Compliment colleagues, compliment friends, compliment, you know, go on Facebook and like, or, or Instagram and, and write a written compliment on something that someone's posted. But 10 times a day, I challenge you for a week, you have nothing to lose, but I want you to experience after that week, how do you feel about yourself? Because if you don't feel better, I want you to give me a thumbs down and whinge about me in the comments. Like berate me, get stuck into me, Damien, you idiot, you don't know anything. Go for it. But it won't happen. And if imagine just one week, you already feel better about yourself. Imagine a month, imagine a year where you are genuinely making other people feel good about themselves. How are they gonna reflect that back onto you, right? If this is a habit that you have, and this is important because introverts usually feel not always, but often like they're not as liked as their extroverted counterparts. They feel like they don't fit in. They feel like they're not wanted around as much because they're not as socially active. But if you, if you just stop being so selfish with your compliments and give them more freely, you will notice a very rapid change. So let me know in the comments if you're up for that challenge. Step number five, change the way you dress. Now, this may not apply to you, but most introverts have a habit of dressing down. Dressing being the most casually dressed um, because part of introversion is not wanting to bring attention to yourself often. Not wanting to bring, you know, to, for people to notice, for, for, to stand out in a group, right? To look like you're trying too hard. This is all very opposite to what introverts generally want. And I know, I know that this might be controversial because a lot of you are going to say, but Damien, we don't want to get our sense of self-confidence just from other people. And that's true. But there is a difference between your overall sense of value as a human being and just feeling confident in a given environment. And so, you know, while I, yes, you want your overall value as a human being to come internally, we can't as humans, we cannot help but be impacted by the way other people respond to us and treat us in public. And this is all about feedback loops. So imagine that I start to go out and every time I go out socially, I'm wearing tracksuit pants and a stained white t-shirt. I know most of you probably dress better than that, uh, point is this, how do you think just generally socially at the shops, like if I'm buying something, the person at the checkout, or, um, you know, if I'm, at, if I'm seeing friends and there's someone new there, or I'm going to, I don't know, some social event or whatever it is, anywhere that I go, can you imagine that being dressed like that would cause people to perceive me and guess my personality in a very specific way? And that's, that's going to change in a very subtle way, the way they look at me, uh, how much they smile, whether they engage me in conversation or not. It's going to impact a lot of those factors because we're human. We can't help but rapidly assess people. Alternatively, imagine if you're always looking like dressed well and, and smelling good. Imagine how, the impact that that is going to have. I'm not talking about women here in dating. I'm just talking about in general, how people are going to treat you differently in a very small but subtle ways consistently all the time. And these, these regular touch points with other people treating you differently, it's like the compliments, they add up. All of a sudden you notice people are treating you better. People are liking you more. People are, without any effort from you, people are engaging you in conversation more often. And so if you do this, if you change the way you dress, you're going to start to feel better about yourself. And of course, the other side is true as well, which is if you put an effort into yourself, into how you look, into how you present, you can't help but feel better about yourself over time. Because what you're doing is you're sub communicating to your subconscious that I am worth this effort, right? I am worth it. This is something I'm putting in an effort into me and I deserve to feel good about it. You are starting to tell yourself that instead of uh, why bother, which is the, the, the subconscious message we tell ourselves when we consistently dress down. And so guys, I challenge you, if you're introverted and you don't feel good in social situations, I challenge you to try this out for a month. Give it a try. Do all five of these steps and see how you feel differently in a month. Because I guarantee you, you can feel more socially confident. Forget about women for a moment. Just think about how you feel about yourself in the man, as a man out there. Once you're feeling more confident, maybe start thinking about women. But for now, just make this about you. And I know because I've been through this journey. You know, I every, everybody sees me as a socially confident, socially adept, chatty, funny guy who can hold his own in any room. But honestly, I'd still rather be at home by myself with my girlfriend, with family, with one or two close friends, 
any day of the week than out there with other people. Honestly, that's me. I, I don't I don't enjoy it. It tires me out, but I'm good at it and I can do it because I've learned to do it. And you can too. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like some personal work with me, don't forget that I also run a one-on-one -on -one Zoom coaching sessions. I'll throw a link in the comments below so you can check that out. As always, guys, take care, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you in my future videos.